Hello everyone, this is Girish from mycloudtutorials.com and in this video we will be solving another Kubernetes exam question. We will be talking about persistent volume claims and how they are used on the pod. We know the pods are ephemeral. What it means is if you store some data on a pod in some directory and the pod is evicted or deleted for whatever reason a new pod is created or not created, we lose that data. So persistent volume, as the name suggests, uh, persists the data and they are independent of the pod's life cycle. So they can retain the data even after the pod is deleted. So in this question, we will be creating a persistent volume, persistent volume claim, and then using that claim to mount the volume that we created on the pods container. So let's take a look at the question. In the namespace MCT, now in the exam scenario, this namespace may or may not exist. So just be a little careful. Create a persistent volume with this name, MCT-PV. It should have a capacity of 100 megabytes, access mode read write once, host path slash temp slash data, and no storage class name defined. Next, in the same namespace MCT, create a persistent volume claim named MCT-PVC. It should request 100 megabytes storage access mode read write once. Now this note may or may not be there in the exam, but I put it here so that uh, we should definitely verify before moving to the next step. Because if, you, if PVC is not bound to PV and you try to use it on pod, your pod will not start and you will waste significant minutes in the exam. So in the same namespace MCT, create a pod named nginx-mct using image nginx container named mct-container which mounts the volume at temp project data. Okay, so take a look at our Kubernetes cluster and first thing first, I'll set up an alias k equals to cube cdl. Let's take a look at the namespace. We don't have an MCT namespace in here, so we will be creating one. So let's create that. So this is a new namespace, uh, sorry. Okay, get namespace MCT, so that is created. Now let's take a look at the documentation and we'll be making use of the documentation. So first thing is persistent volume. So what we will do is we will copy this template and create a YAML file on our system. So I'll just say, let's say mcpv.yaml. I'll paste it here and then we'll change according to our need. So we need to create a persistent volume with name as mct-pv. We don't need the labels, so I'm going to delete them. We don't need the storage class, so I'm going to delete that as well. And our storage capacity was 100 megabytes, not gigabytes, 100 megabytes. Read write once is good, and we will be mounting it at temp data. So we'll say TMP data. Everything looks good. Let's create this. Okay apply minus f mcpv dot yaml you get pv so our persistent volume is created it is available access mode is read write once 100 megabyte is allocated great so let's create a persistence volume claim persistent volume claim we would have to create in the namespace mct so just have to be careful on that so Again, uh, mcpvc.yaml. So let's see, the name is that we have to give is mctpvc. We don't have a storage class name, so I'm going to remove that. Read write once is good, and we will request 100 megabytes. And we have to create this in the namespace, name space mct. Everything looks good. So let's try to create this. K apply minus F uh, MVPVC. 
RMC PVC. Let's take a look at this MCT get PVC. So our persistent volume claim is created and it is bound, which means it's bound to the volume that we created in the previous step. So let's say take a look at the PV and it says is bound and is bound to this particular claim. So this is looks this looks good. So this is what I wanted to verify before moving to the step where we create a part. So let's take a look at uh, what exactly happens behind the scene. So behind the scene, a temp slash temp slash data is used by this volume, which is mounted on the pod, which will be mounted on the pod at a certain directory. So let's take a look at the host. We have two hosts. This is the host one. And in the temp directory right now, there is no data folder. There is no data folder on either of the hosts. Let's create this part and see once the part comes alive, if we get this data folder, I expect it to get it. Otherwise there is some issue. So let's take a look at uh, the parts template and then create a part MC part dot ML. So let's start with the part name. Part name is engines dash MCT. So I'll say ngix dash mct. Now we will have to mount the persistent volume claim. So what we will do is we will mount here. Well, before we do that, let's just set the namespace also so that we don't forget. Namespace is mct. And persistent volume claim is the name that we gave uh, while creating the claim, which is mct dash PVC. This name doesn't matter as long as this name and the name that we use to mount on the container matches. So we'll leave it as is. Now the exam asked us to name the container as MCT container. So let's let's name the container as MCT container. Engines, I don't need to specify the ports because we don't really care about the ports. And mount path is asking me to mount as temp project data. So let's see. Temp project data. Okay, so namespace is good, name is good, container name is good, and the volume that we are mounting is from MCT PVC volume claim and this volume is mounting on a container on a path temp project data. So when my part comes up, we should have this folder created already. So let's see. K minus uh, K apply minus F MC pod. K minus N MC T PVC and pod. Let's take a look. T and get PVC, sorry. So my pod is running which is great. So now let's see uh, which host it's running on. K minus N, CT, get PO, and we can check that using O white flag. So it's running on worker node two. So let's take a look at worker node two. And if I have a data folder there, no surprises, the data folder got created at the slash temp data location as soon as the volume was mounted on the pod. Host one doesn't have it because this part was actually deployed on host two. So from the exam perspective, we are done. Uh, we created the persistent volume, we created a persistent volume claim, and we also created the part using that persistent volume claim. And if you can, if you describe this part, you should see that the claim is being used. And NX dash MCT. Sorry, describe part. And if you see this particular persistent volume claim has been used. Now we'll do a little bit more fun. Um, I will go into the pod and see if I write a file, if it stores on the host path or not. So let's say K minus N MCT exact IT. This is optional, uh, not needed for the exam, but I think this is really interesting for our understanding uh, how this whole 
the volume mounts and the pod work together. TMP slash project data. No file in here, so I'll just create a file, echo, hello, and let's say test1.txt. Before that, I will go to my node 2 and see if there's any file in this location now. So let's create this file and this file is created and this should be on the host as well. More if I test it on the host, the content is the same. Which is great. So now let's try to do that, which I told you earlier that pods are ephemeral and the persistent volume persists the data even in the case the pod is deleted. So let's try to delete that pod. T delete pod ngin next dash mct. So let's in mct get po. There are no pods here. Let's see if I still have my data file. Yes, so here I'll do one more thing, sudo vi test two dot text. And let's see if uh, when the pod comes up, uh, we'll create a new pod and we'll just want to test whether when the mount is, is the directory is mounted, we get uh, whatever the cont content, just not the one that was created from the previous pod. Let's call it Girish and save it. So we have two files here. We'll go back to our master and create this pod again. K okay, apply minus F M C P O T dot YAML. K okay, minus M M C T get P O. So the pod is running. Let exec into the pod. CD temp project data. Oh, most likely this pod is running on host one. So let's see if the data file is created here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's running on pod uh, worker node one. Now that's something that uh, is not desirable. Uh, so you have to be careful about the multi uh, host uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster because this kind of, uh, this kind of des undesirable stuff can happen. So, if I uh, were to create a file here, let's say uh, sudo vi gilish txt Okay, and let's go back to the pod and see if I see that file there. Oh, I exited, sorry. Project data and if I see the Girish dot text file is here. So uh, if I delete this pod and recreate and whichever host the next pod is uh, scheduled, we will see the content from that uh, particular node. So let's try to do that real quick and then see what we find. So let's see k minus n m c t p o minus o wide and this time it's running on worker node one so it should when we exact into the con the pod uh, we should see this gerish.txt file so we should exact into the pod and see what we find tmp project data oops sorry cd slash tmp slash project data and I see the grish.txt file is there. So that's all for this demo. We were able to successfully create a persistent volume, bound it to a persistent volume claim and using the persistent volume claim on the pod, we were able to mount this volume on the pods container. I hope you really like it and it was useful. Please like, share and subscribe for more Kubernetes certification videos like this. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.